Last episode, we started discrete collision detection with a simple point versus AABB test. Now we'll build on that for our AABB versus AABB testing. For this, we'll be using the Minkowski difference method. The reason we're using this method is because later on, when we add continuous collision detection for fast moving objects, it'll be much simpler. If you've been enjoying the series, consider triple smashing that like button. Subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss future episodes. Before we get into the implementation, let's first walk through the method we'll be using. For demonstration of what I'm about to explain, let's add two more AABBs to the screen. One will be set to the cursor position, which will update each frame. The sum AABB will be set to the same position as our test AABB, and we'll add the sizes of the other two boxes together. I'm just going to start calling them boxes. Following this, we want to head down into the main function and render the boxes. In order to understand the Minkowski difference, let's first take a look at the Minkowski sum. The Minkowski sum is the sum of two shapes, in our case rectangles, but they could be any two convex shapes. This can get complicated if you're using shapes that have a different number of vertices. But we're just using rectangles, so all we need to do is add the four vertices together. A way to visualize this is to take one shape and sweep it around the edge of another shape. Now that we know what the Minkowski sum is, what about the Minkowski difference? It's the same, except you subtract the positions. Let's head over to the physics module to create the functions we need. In physics.h, we'll be defining just three functions for this episode. AABB intersect AABB, AABB Minkowski difference, and AABB penetration vector. I haven't prefixed the last two functions with physics because they'll eventually become static functions used internally in the physics module. For now, we'll just be using them to visualize what's going on, so we'll make them accessible. The Minkowski difference function is quite simple. First, we subtract the positions of the boxes, then we add the sizes together. This is so simple because we're just using two boxes. If we're using other kinds of shapes, you have to first find the vertices that make up the hull of the shape and then add those together with the other shape and do the same thing. Our situation is much more simple. Let's head back to main.c so we can visualize what's going on with this function. Inside our update loop, we'll just create an AABB to store the Minkowski difference result. We'll call it Minkowski difference. The order doesn't matter in relation to the Minkowski difference, but it's important for calculating the penetration vector, which we'll be looking at later in the episode. So make sure to pass in the test box first and then the cursor box. Now let's render the Minkowski difference result and take a look at what it does. Moving your cursor to the bottom left of the screen should make the entire box visible. However, as we move the cursor closer to the test box, the orange box moves closer to 0, 0, the origin, which is the bottom left of our screen. And this is the really cool part. Whenever the orange box contains the origin, our two boxes are colliding. You can verify this for yourself at this point by just moving the boxes around. With this piece of information, we can move back to the physics module and implement the AABB intersect AABB function. In physics.c, inside the body of the function, we just want to get the Minkowski difference of the two boxes, then get the min and max of the result, then check if the origin is inside. And that's all we need for discrete. Now let's head back over to main and use this function to change the color of our cursor box, AABB collision detection. Having a boolean that two boxes collided is all well and good, but how can we use that to simulate something like a floor or wall? What about the collision response? To drag our box over the left side of the test box, we can see that we should just bounce back out into the left. But how can the computer know that? Well, this is where using the Minkowski difference comes in handy. If you take a look at the bottom left, the origin, you'll notice that the left side of the box is closest to the origin. If we move the box right to the edge, we see that it's just lining up on the origin. We can now create a function to give us the penetration vector. That is the smallest vector that will push our movement box out of the test box. To find the penetration vector, we simply test all four sides and keep the shortest vector. Diagonals will never be the shortest, so we just reset one of the axes to zero as we go along. First, we'll get the min and max of the Minkowski difference box. Then we'll create a float, min dist. This float will be the absolute value of the x-axis to start with. Since we're testing against the origin, that is zero, zero, we can just check the length of each side on the relevant axis. First, we test the left, then the right, then bottom and top. If the bottom or top distance is shorter than the left or right, then we reset the x-axis value to zero. Over in main.c, let's create a new box and also draw a line to visualize our response. First, we'll create the penetration vector and compute it, passing in the Minkowski difference box that we created earlier. Next, we'll create another box. I'll call it collision AABB and assign it to the current value of cursor AABB. Add the penetration vector to the position, then render it down in the block where we check if there's a collision. Just under this, still inside the if statement, we want to add the cursor position to the penetration vector, then render it as a line segment. Compile and run the game to see what it looks like. Dragging the cursor box over the test box now shows us where the box should end up after a collision occurs. And 
the vector required to move it to that position. To round off this episode, I want to show one common issue with this method. Tunneling. Tunneling is what happens when an object is moving so quickly that it passes through another object without the program having the chance to detect that they were intersecting. To demonstrate this issue more clearly, let's head back to main.c and do some tinkering. First, we'll create another AABB outside the loop. We'll call it start AABB and keep the same size as the cursor AABB. Next, we'll do some crude input handling. In the SDL input switch statement, Add another case for SDL underscore mouse button down. We'll run a simple check to make sure the button is the left mouse button. If so, set the start AABB position to the mouse position. Finally, we'll render a line between the cursor box and the start box. Now compile and run the game. All right, what we're doing is pretending that the start box we just created is the position last update and the cursor box is the current position. Or another way to think about it is the start box is the position now and the cursor box is the position next frame. If we click on one side of the box, then move to be intersecting on the same side, everything seems fine. But what happens if the velocity of this box is so high that next frame is just over halfway through the test box? Well, as you can see, we pop out the other side. If the velocity is even higher, a collision won't be detected at all. This is tunneling and it's the problem we will be solving next episode. So subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of when that comes out.